What happens when you bring two of the world's best collectors together and challenge them to go head to head in a 10 round auction battle? Welcome to Clash of the Collectibles. Two experts compete on a road trip treasure hunt. Carry on whinging. <laughs> Our combatants, Great Britain's international antique star, Eric Knowles. I'm butting for Britain. He's travelled to Australia to take on top dealer, author and retro lover, Alan Carter. So it is a genuinely difficult competition. I want to beat him and he wants to beat You're me. You're looking at me. You're looking at me. It's all about outwitting. Oh, 50 dollars. Give I'll give you 60. Outdealing. <laughs> Better watch this one. <laughs> Over $200, Alan. Do you, are you serious? And outselling in a massive auction showdown. First, second, third and final I'll sell. Whoever wins the most rounds after 10 auctions will win the competition. Both our experts can buy anything they want, and we mean anything. It's so you. Because like yesterday's that. perfect purchase oh could you turn go. out to be auction day's big Jesus. dud. Paid 100 for those. Ouch. So fasten your seatbelts. Uh, it's going to be a bumpy ride. I want to kick you. What a bad loser. Round three of this 10 round battle, Eric narrowly winning round two. The scores, one all. You know, he's all smiles and everything, and you know, we are pals. Oh, I'm, I'm bowing out gracefully. But deep down is an ingrained desire to knock the socks off me. But I'm a big boy and I'm hanging on to them. Each round is a new budget and a new location. Next stop, the national capital with a tight $900 to spend. Good morning, Alan. The trip to Canberra took the best part of a couple of hours. And the minute I arrive in this place, I'm mindful that it is a city that has been designed from scratch. I mean, it is so meticulously laid out. I find it's uh, a very difficult city for me. I can never, ever work out where I am. I come here five or six times a year, and I get lost five or six times a year. I can never, ever find my way around Canberra. And when I put my sat-nav on, it can't find its way around either. So I'm always at a loss. Alan gives Eric a quick tour of Canberra, stopping at Australia's most expensive building, Parliament House. Look at it. Opening in 1988, costing $1.1 billion dollars. I remember I'm the tourist. It's a little more than the boys have to spend. Right, look as intelligent as you possibly can, OK? Like you. Like me. Go on, look at me. <laughs> With $900 in their pockets, they travel to their first location, just 15 minutes from the city centre. There's a billabong. You haven't seen a billabong. You've seen a dam on a property. Hopefully, I'll see a, a billabong shortly after seeing a kangaroo. Why not see a billabong, but you'll definitely see a kangaroo. So, OK, all right. How are you these days with jolly swag men? Oh, you've got loads of them. Oh, there's the green shed. When it came to today's first call, I thought that Alan Carter had lost his marbles. Excuse me, Alan. <laughs> Alan, hang on, hang on. I think you've took a wrong turn, mate, because this strikes me as a rather upmarket, but still a civic tip. You know what it is, in reality? Well, it says... It's a... an upmarket civic tip. The Green Shed is one of Australia's most unique businesses, turning someone else's trash into another's treasure. Every day, hundreds of loads of household rubbish comes in and gets sorted. The real rubbish goes to the tip. The rest is recycled and sold at the Green Shed. It was a temple dedicated to recycling. Experience? Yeah, one, um, right. once in a lifetime, I think this might be Alan. So Eric and I stand there, and we meet Tiny, who runs it, and he's, he's offside to Charlie. Depending on your body language is the, is the price. Right. So... <laughs> they know a lot about a little. We know a little about a lot. Knowing a lot is not the only tool Tiny and Charlie use. They read body language and can work out the telltale signs when a customer really wants something. So who wants who? Which one do you want? I'll have the harder one. I'll have the apprentice one. But that's the short guy or the tall guy? The tall guy. All right, you want the Aussie guy? Yes, the All Aussie right. guy. No worries. Yes, you can have the pomp. Yeah, easy. Just to clear that up, Alan's new nickname is Apprentice 1 and Eric is Apprentice 2. 
Earlier today, Tiny and Charlie cleared a deceased estate, and we've got first dibs. What I was looking at were the leftovers from people who are no longer with us. Wow, it's pretty nice. Fake. That's if fake this one. was a real Nazi camera, it would be worth thousands of dollars. But Eric knows there's a flood of Russian-made fakes. It's real. Mind your fingers. Yeah, I know. It's real. Yeah, but it's crap. Yeah, I know. It's all like the mayor. Yeah, heavy metal. <laughs> yeah. He's in his natural habitat. If he had a middle name, and he probably has, but if I could give him a middle name, it would be definitely Alan the Rummager Carter. All right, all right. So this is all the stuff out of the truck, yeah? So I go in there and start dragging stuff out and putting it on the floor and opening boxes and laying it down and kneeling down. So Eric's horrified and he can't believe that I'm kneeling on the floor. And he's crouched, you know, he's crouched because he doesn't like getting his hands dirty. Oh, how much do you want for a 50 cent piece? A dollar. A dollar. <laughs> <laughs> what I was looking at is they slightly sped up. So they was they were starting to get excited, so we knew there was going to be a sale there. So your reproduction lighter. Yep. The dead Japanese sword. Mm hmm And the uh, unsaleable cocktail sticks. You're taking this to auction? Yes, right. We've got to, that's exactly right. All right. So we're on, the, we're on the price. I'll do it this way. Whatever you think you're going to get, the mid-range of auction, I'll charge you 40%. And I said, well, I don't know what I'm going to get, because we're going to go to auction. He said, well, that's where it is, isn't it? Just tell me 40%. Does anybody want a calculator while I'm at it? Because the mathematics here is... is well, it's uh, pretty easy. We got it. We got it. Good, good. That's easy. It. So if it's $200, I'll give you 80 bucks. And he says, yeah. Because this way, I know you're going to be fair. I know exactly what you've done. you trapped me. Yes. <laughs> it's a very difficult way to work, because he's put you on your honour. 100 bucks. Done. Can I just say to chaps, you've just witnessed something that not many people have ever witnessed before. Alan Carter doing a deal on his knees. <laughs> <laughs> Alan's already buying, but Eric is feeling the heat. Why, Jingo, you can feel it on your head. That sun is really bearing down on you. I'm not going to linger too much out here, because I can really feel it, and I've got a very, very delicate skin. Just wish I could see a kangaroo. Alan has sneaked back to the truck to fossick around for more goodies. First thing I see is a Georgian camphor wood chest. It is a cracking piece of furniture, so I ignored it. What do you know about his trunk? This is pretty nice. There's a difference between me asking him and him asking me, because if I ask him, he knows I want it. Right? And if he asks me, I know he wants to sell it. But it is very nice. Want 200 for it? My partner's coming here. You I'll said everyth everything's negotiable, you said. Everything's negotiable. Can't be negotiable and go like that. I don't know. What do you reckon? Apprentice number two hasn't bought anything, so we're helping apprentice number one. We're having a competition here. I'm supposed right. to beat him. 40%. 200 bucks. I didn't actually see Eric buying anything, but to take him to the green shed, where he's going to be a bit off balance and not quite understand my enthusiasm for rubbish, <laughs> then <laughs> he's, he's under the hammer a little bit. I'm sure it's that way up rather than yes. the other way up. Yep. It's called a coffee table. How on earth could you put a co cup of coffee on a curved service well, like that? It's a curved coffee table. Right, OK, a curved And for a fiver, you can have it. A fiver? A <laughs> fiver, five pounds. Uh, five, five, <laughs> yeah. pounds. five pounds. Five yeah. pounds, there's, there's more stuff here that you're welcome to go through. We haven't really looked through it yet, but go nuts. Go nuts. You must be nuts to buy it, Charlie. Hey, no way. Look at all that good stuff. He's quick. Alan's already picked out, you guessed it, another bundle buy. What's that, John McEnroe tennis racket? There was a nice apple box. He said he wanted $10, and I said I'd give you $5. It's got Skippy on it, man. And he said... If I toss you double or nothing. If I win... You get 10 bucks. Yeah. If I win, I've got it for nothing. For nothing? That's what double or nothing is. It's not double or something else. Double. Oh, or nothing, isn't it? You're getting on a technicality you, now. Yeah. You either get double the money or you get nothing. Heads or tails? Heads. Ah! Got it! <laughs> and I won. I got the box for nothing. I did, slowly but surely, find a few things. 40, 50... Go on, you tell me. 50 bucks. 50 bucks. A saddle, Eric? Before we go... Hang on. And an original oil painting. I'll take 10 bucks for that one. 10 bucks. Charlie, stick it on in your arm. Buying on the hoof, you might say. I'm done for the day. 
you, you, you've done some spending. I've done a lot of spending. What do you got? Um, you oh, I, I thought it was quite nice. Yeah, how much you pay for it? Oh, that'd be telling, Alan. Oh, come on. Well, I'd, I'd push the boat out. I mean, I paid uh, ten dollars for that. So how much you spent, Alan? I spent about four hundred bucks. You have you have spent four hundred dollars. You are super ferried. Yeah. I bought a box there. So oh, I'm sorry, them. these are all your purchases yeah, on. So right? Not all, right. all of them, no. So no. I put all the money in there that right. I get from the auction. Okay. And you're not because you haven't got anything. I don't like feeling so inadequate. I do want to spend, and I'm just wondering what Elvis Aaron Presley. What's what what's what's that worth? What can it be? What can it be? I'm not really a big fan of Elvis, so 20 bucks for you. 20 bucks. I'm not even going to argue. I'm, I'm going to say yes. I'm British, I'm proud, and I'm a member of the British Kangaroo Spotting Society. Uh, I ended up with five purchases, 100 Australian dollars. I think all things being equal, money very well spent. Shall we put this on board? OK. Because somebody's turned a heater on here, Alan. Yeah, it looks like And I'll tell you what, they've got all three bars going, because it's, it's all... My head's hot. I've got a hot <laughs> head, Alan. Driving back to Canberra, Alan makes a confession. I saw that box, Charlie's behind me, and you know how your eyes go, zing, 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 and you've taken in everything about that box, yeah. and immediately asked Charlie about the table that's next to the box over there. And then I, I behaved in the most devious possible way I could. No, I behave like an antique dealer. Same thing. Which was, <laughs> which was, don't show your hand. After his green shed splurge, Alan has just $500 left from his $900 budget. Cautious Eric has $800. Where we're going now, it is the complete opposite of where you've been this morning. This is far more tuned to your sensibilities than <laughs> is the green shed. Patronise me. <laughs> we went from the green shed to collectorium. In other words, we went from the ridiculous to the sublime. Everything in this, this shop is researched to the nth degree. There's nothing that you could pick up here that isn't fully described properly. Good luck. Yeah, lots of it. I think I might need it. It can be hard work in a shop like this. Prices are really just about the top of the market. So to find a bargain in here is not going to be easy at all. Yeah, having said that, I've just shot myself in the foot because I think that's a stunning cup and saucer. Absolutely beautiful. It's Japanese. Alan goes for the bundle. 45 on that. So what's the best you can do on those two? 130. Very pleased with them too because they're different to anything else I've got. And Eric thinks he spotted a Scottish pebble brooch. I've seen it before. Faux. Oh, faux. So not the real thing? Not the real thing. No silver hallmarks are just no, white metal? No, no. Just so have you got anything that, that might compare as the real thing? Little one. Agate and sterling silver one. Um, Gosh, you can see, see the difference, can't you? Mm. Really can see the difference. A lady would wear it on a, you know, to hold a, the, the plaid scarf or whatever they call it, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Thank you for showing me that. My pleasure. It's a little bit beyond me, is that one. Eric is struggling, finally finding a little piece yeah. of England. It's quite pretty. If Alan Carter's in here... Well, I just told him what he's allowed to have for his. OK, all right. What his reduction well, is. I think whatever that is for Alan is it good enough for me. me. Yeah. You know, what was $80 immediately became 50 Hey. Eric, it's your birthday. So, um, you know, all things considered, I felt that I bought OK, but I bought one object. Mr Carter bought two. Eric now has six items, while Alan has bought 11, including one for free. If only his navigation skills were as strong as his haggling talents. Oh, I should have gone up there over the top. Yeah, this is like Burley Griffin. Some pressure that's pushing that water up to that height, isn't it? Back on track, next stop is Federal Books and Collectibles. Alan, you go that way, I'll go this way. <laughs> all right, a bit fairer, that. This is no ordinary antique shop. First of all, how does it work? Because everything's got lot numbers on it. Yeah, essentially, we're an auction house. If an item doesn't sell at auction, after the auction, we can sell it at the reserve price. OK. We have understandings from the vendors that we can actually sell it at a 
a fair market price as well, in, in a lot of cases. So. Well, what about an unfair market price? <laughs> I'm sure we can work on something there and uh, we'll look after the vendors. It was a great little shop and, uh, you know, the minute you walked in there, well, I knew I was at a slight advantage because Alan had just gone and spend, spend, spend up at the Green Shed. So I had more cash in my pocket than he had. And as we know, in all businesses, cash is king. A hundred on this one. And the Waratah, we're talking 70. I decided I need to go up a scale. I, you know, let's go for something bigger, butch, and, you know, whatever. And I see a chair. It goes without saying that I think those would be more itch and scratch than shabby chic. And then I see four matching stand chairs. And I think, you know, oh, that's amazing. I'm going to have a go. How much for the set? For the set, we would have to be uh, in the two to $300 range there. Because I'm an open book. If I offered you uh, down the middle at 250 250 I think it's fair. Thank you very much. OK, good egg. Something labelled the bee meter catches Alan's attention. It has a compass on the back, and then it's got all of these numbers all the way around. So Gary hasn't found anybody who knows what it is. Let's hope an auction bidder loves it too. What's the deal on that chair? It's a very good question, Alan. Um, we could... It's the main question in yeah, life. How much is. is that? How much is it? <laughs> How much is it? $80 on that one, Alan. All right, I'll buy that one. Alan now starts rounding up a bunch of items to work out a bundle deal. All of a sudden, I'm seeing things. I mean, I'm thinking, all right, I'll have that ka-ching. I'll have, yeah, look, I'll have that ka-ching, ka-ching, ka-ching. So if we could do that at $60, is that a, is that a deal? Yes, we can do okay, that. OK, excellent. All right, I'll have that. Nice Art Deco uh, little biscuit barrel. Pair of Chinese plaques. Yeah, they're quite interesting. As I said, because they only came in yesterday, <laughs> literally came in yesterday, we haven't done the study on these yet, so right. you, you might get a bargain on these ones. Well, I don't want to take advantage um, unknowingly. <laughs> But, um, I mean, I see them purely from a decorative point. You know, I'm not sure exactly what I've got, although they are obviously 20th century. But that can be a good thing, because there's a period called Republican whereby um, some great masters of the um, ceramic art world were allowed to practise under limited circumstances during that sort of 1930s, 40s, 50s regime. Um, we're talking into Chairman Mao days. Um, just before the Cultural Revolution. So I'll keep my fingers off. If the Republican, hey, bingo, you know, we're off to the Bahamas. Um, there was something, there was a, where is it gone? There was a little clock. <laughs> I think Mr. Carter had that in his hands not long ago. Did he? Yeah. All right. Because it was located, as you say, just there. Yes. yes, yes, it was there a few minutes ago, wasn't it? Yes. OK, Alan, the shadow Carter, had slipped in there and taken it from right underneath my nose. Gazumped. Instead, Eric buys up the deco cookie jar and the Chinese fish. Gary collects top-secret war items like these silk escape maps sewn into British pilot uniforms in case of capture. Well, Eric, this is the uh, probably the world's most expensive plastic comb. It looks very much like your bog-standard comb. There's nothing different about it, you can't see through it, but hidden inside it, from the X-ray, you can actually tell that inside the comb is a little swinger compass. And so, in order to use the compass, they would have had to break and destroy this at a compass to assist their escape. That is just incredible. So, what would I have to pay for something like that? We would expect that to sell for approximately six to $800. Yeah. <laughs> I paid six pounds sterling the other day for a <laughs> comb. I thought I'd been done. Elton John, he auctioned off his collection of jewellery and other things in London. Absolutely incredible. Look at that. You've actually got an item there which uh, looks like it came from our reject box. But if they're a reject, they're probably free then, aren't they? Well, they were in, I think we must have... Go we, we, did, we didn't rate them that highly. <laughs> Alan's done it again, picking up another freebie. We go 100 bucks for that lot. $100 for the lot. For the job lot. You're not far off. We could probably work for that, Alan. Now? Yes. I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued with this because I used to have this collection. Right. I'm looking at it, my head is saying, are you going to pay $200 for this set? You know, and my heart is saying, buy it, and my head's saying, you're not going to make a profit of 200 So he hasn't said anything yet, but that's, what, that's the fight that's going on inside me. We're looking about $80 for that. 
Eighty dollars. He threw me so much. I said, "Yeah, all right." <laughs> <laughs> With the Ned Kelly sculptures, this one would be Alan. This one would be the poor antique dealer. I came out of that all smiles, um, and by the end of the morning, I'd redress the balance when it came to sales. So we're all smiling at the moment. Alan has a hundred dollars left to spend from his nine hundred dollar budget. Eric has a hundred and thirty. We hit the road and bid farewell to Canberra. We had to go about an hour and a half north to see a friend of mine, Martin. Alan plays tour guide along the way, stopping at one of Australia's saltiest bodies of inland water. What we're looking at, Alan? You're looking at a very famous landmark. This is called Lake George. What happens is the water disappears, and then it just comes back gradually over a period of months or years. I've been here when it's been full, and I've been here when it's been full of cows. Because no. he's really? Yeah, it's the most oh, wow. amazing. I better be place. quick in case it drains away. Let's it's give not, it a <laughs> drain away. Let's like, give it a... It's not a bath. Back on the road, that trip to Martin's takes longer than expected. I don't know if my sat nav is gonna work. Right. Houston, we have a problem. I'm lost. And now Eric is not a good person to be lost with. I think we've been on a one hour 30 minute detour. <laughs> Some kangaroos run in front, and I've missed it. Again. Again. <laughs> Again. What is it? What is it, you kangaroos? What have I done wrong to you? Come on, show yourself. Did you see the roo? Did you see the roo? We just got a result, I mean, big time, because we just came across what I'm told is a complete mob of kangaroos. We're happy now, aren't we? We're happy. We're happy. Anyway, we arrive. Let me ask you, have you ever seen an antique shop like that? Um, I, a simple answer would be no. Have you ever seen an antique dealer like that? No. no. I found myself facing a guy who, if ever you wanted a double for Ben Gunn from Robinson Crusoe, in other words, the castaway that just craved cheese, he's the man. This antiques dealer is also an owner-builder. So far, his home has been a 10-year project and counting. We're led into this very sort of um, dark house that's half-built. Oh, you get snakes here, do you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, OK. Now, this one here, you'll appreciate. <coughs> I don't know if you've seen one before. It's an original pillow radio. Oh. These were used in hospitals and motels, and the speaker... They were called pillow radios because the speaker was actually put under the pillow yeah. so that they wouldn't disturb the people next in the bed next. We only dream about these finds. But they were pillow radios. Oh, I thought you were saying pillar. No, pillow. Oh, pillow. 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 And he's Irish. And when he talks to you, you have to get your ears in gear. That's from... an original pub mirror. It's an original bottle opener from the, that they use in the pubs, in the taverns. <coughs> Look, I wouldn't sell that for under hand because it's worth 350 to 450 You wouldn't sell it from... from, from... For what? And under a hundred dollars. A hundred, a hundred dollars. And it's, it's, uh, that, that's got the RD mark and everything on. That's a really early one. And I looked at it, and it's all there. And I just, uh, how much is it? Hundred dollars. I love it, because I'm thinking, without being unkind, I don't want to linger here. I'm just checking the floor for snakes, and and things that can bite you. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll leave you. Do you want me to tie a rope round your waist and pull you out? I can just about manage it. My mum and dad used to take me to castles and things like that. Yep. And, you know, you think your dad knows everything, don't you? So mm. if there was an, a spike coming out of a, of a wall, I'd say, what's that for, dad? Mm. And he'd say, it's a thing of purpose, Eric, a thing of purpose. <laughs> now, that kept me quiet. Mm. But you've brought yep. something out of a top drawer oh. which has got me totally flummoxed. So, Martin, just explain to me what we're looking at. It's actually a poacher's gun trap. They were used by the la landlords back in the 19th century. You put it up like this and it cocked it. The yep. Originally, there was a pin here that would hit a flint. Yep. It was set on the ground. You had three different wires going that way, going that way, going that way. Now, this would catch on the bottom here. So when they tripped the wire here, yep. when they tripped that one there, yeah, bang. Bang. The shot. But it automatically twisted around and, sh and fired. Oh, it shot. twisted around and shot. fired at you? Gone automatically. Shot around. Good grief. And shot them. Oh, it's a nasty piece of work. Well, I tell you what, I'm happy. I'm happy with my 
relatively tame bottle opener. Yeah. Is cash OK, by the way? Oh, yes. <laughs> See, uh, <laughs> yes, please. Him, he's telling you stories all the time. He's like me. He's telling you stories non-stop while he's selling you something. I've never seen a famine, a famine dresser. These um, <clears throat> were dresses during the Irish famine in the late 1840s and early 1850s. People were hungry, so the chooks had to be brought in at night. And what they did is they adopted to the bottom of the dressers um, so they could actually put the chucks in here so the hungry people wouldn't eat them at night. When the famine was over, people were really embarrassed with the fact that they were denying their neighbours food. So they actually dumped a lot of these so they didn't survive. What would that be worth? The four grand. But the thing about it, it's not foreign, it's a piece of furniture, it's a piece of history. Yes, history, yeah. I'd only got $30 left. Do I really want to sell the teapot? Is it perfect? Yes, it's perfect. So, OK, I'll have it. Uh, because I can't believe I'm going to be able to find anything else in this morass. Sir, OK. Thank you. He sold me um, a, a really fantastic apple core. This guy here goes around. I doubt very much if there's an older one here in Australia, to be quite honest. How much is that? Uh, 50 bucks would be the best on that one. I'd be twisting my arm behind my back at that. Alan, can I offer you a bit of advice? <laughs> can I offer you a bit of advice, Alan? <laughs> Alan, look, I don't like to interfere when you're doing a deal. Just buy it, OK? Four. Just Very buy good. it. Time is of the essence. Yeah, it's going darker. It's going dark. We've got to hack our way out of this place, Alan. And watch okay. for the kangaroos and carols. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. What do you think? Just I buy it. Oh, you bought it. Good, good. OK, I'll go and get the car sorted, OK? Eric wants to escape before nightfall, but there's still more. Before he's finished selling me the apple core, he's telling me about what he's got up on the hillside, and I'm thinking, I don't know what you're talking about, the hillside. So he says, come on, I'll show you, I'll show you. And then he starts this mount... You're like you've got to be mounting goats. You come out of the place, you go out the back, and there's this... It's half a mountain, and he starts running up this mountain. I start trying to run up after him, and he's gone. And then when you get up there, he's got all sorts of stuff just put out in the middle. Original Keynes Master. He just leaves it out there. And I'm looking at this stuff and big really yeah, good that, things. That is really a big one. I bought that off the side of the road last year. Did you really? Yeah, the museum was having a massive auction, but a couple of cunning guys came along on Sunday morning with their own stuff and put it on the side of the road. <laughs> <laughs> Got that, that, and the syphilis one. Oh, which, uh, there's another one here. This is probably the best one of all. Original David Joe in Sydney. Oh, how about that? You won't find another one of those. I'm looking at the thing and said to him, it's a, a knife sharpening thing in a cart. It's just a magic thing. And it's starting to fall apart. And I said to him, how long have you had that? He said, oh, he said, it's only been up here for about two years. He said, if I don't sell it in another couple of years, it'll fall to pieces. It's not, it's not often, Alan, you come to the Australian bush and you see a rickshaw with an Irish man owning it. All these different things that he's just bought and stuck out in this field on the top of the mountain. It is absolutely amazing. Yes, Irish throne chair. It's probably about 170 years old. All of this, so every bit of this here has actually been hand carved. There's no machines. Every bit of it's hand carved. What sort of money you got on that? About five grand. On the way down the mountain, he says, "Oh, look at this." He said, "You see this? <laughs> this came out. <laughs> this came out. This came out in 1820. <laughs> uh, that, and there's an armchair with the, the windows picked it up." It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. He is the most remarkable man you'll ever meet, but he's a lovely, lovely character. It was just a bizarre day. You know, uh, I couldn't have invented that day if I'd have wanted to. Well, after a monster journey uh, from your capital city of Canberra, we are now here at the auction day and uh, we're going for uh, round three. Round three of this 10-round battle is held at Lawson's Auctioneers. At auction, everything is on a knife edge. And today's ringmaster is Shauna Farron Price. With Alan and Eric spending $900 on 35 items, it's going to be a packed auction day. And don't forget, there's no reserve. Everything will be sold. I'll just say neither of us would ever feel nervous. Yeah. Right? Neither of us ever feel apprehensive. Yeah. And neither of us ever feel confident. Because we're both scared. <laughs> we are scared, you know what. It's impossible to say who will win this competition. This lovely little Leica camera, it's a reproduction from the 1980s. I had a, a real stroke of luck when we were down in Canberra at the Green Shed because I'm quite happy to dig around in rubbish and Eric is not. No further. 150. Cheap. 
or expensive? I, I, bought, I bought a job lot. Okay. And I don't know what I pay for each individual oh, yes, one. Yes, it's the, the technique, the yeah. Alan Carter technique of yeah, haven't broken down. Alan did two bundle buys at Canberra's Green Shed, picking up heaps of amazing items. And he scored big time. His paper mache mask bought for $10 sold... 80 Wow. The $5 oh, Union Jack. $60. Well done. His $50 Masonic medal. $140. All done. And the Masonic medal going out then at $140. Last chance. Alan picked a really good camphorwood chest. He nabbed it for 200 bucks off the back of a truck. Out she goes. It sold for $300 and it was a really good piece. Isn't that a great poster? Mm. You know, his profits are zooming before my very eyes. Even his Chairman Mao poster, one of those uh, buys from, dare I say, the green shed, made $130. So everything he seems to be touching is turning to gold. I really like this apple box. All right, Apple Joey. Can they really like Skippy? At a very humble $15, $20 only. Was that $10? I went in the toss-up. I, I won it. Won it. He tossed, he lost, I got the box for nothing, and it sold at the auction of $35. So I think that was quite a good win. So my uh, my purchases at the green shed start to surface. And I'll start away $15, $20. The green at $20. Shed. At $20 for the Elvis, $25 up the back. New blood on the stairs. I think I'm quids in on that one. An original oil painting featuring an Australian sheep station in a landscape. Start me at 20 Come on, oh, where come are on, you? Australia, $20. wake up. It's I've your heritage, Australia, it's, it's your heritage. I'm taking it at okay. $10. No, no, I start no, 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 at no. 10, surely 10, more. Surely more. $10. Where are they? Jane, I don't want to hear 15 this. thank you, madam. Despite the fact I paid $10 for it and came in for a lot of flack from Alan on that one, I can tell you, I still managed to make a 50% profit. Yeah, $5. Uh, I got 15 for it. Now, I'm looking at this audience, I'm thinking, who's come here on a horse today? Because I've got a riding saddle. I paid $50 for this. Very low, $25, I thought that $30. Was... Oh, no, come $30. on. $30. I've been seeing saddles sold at car boots and antique fairs for good money. Well, I must be I must be up to double, treble my money. At 50, on the floor 50. at 50. I'm on the floor. 60, <laughs> any day of the week, 70 here. At 70, I made a $20 profit. But it was a profit, and that is the most important thing. 306. It's a great buyer. There was a Hardy Brothers tray. When that's polished up, it's going to look fantastic. 100 for it. There was a little bit of blue sky coming for me in the form of the silver plate uh, presentation tray. Last chance, then. Fair warning. Paid $10 for it, and it sold for um, 150 so far, Alan has converted his $400 spend at the Green Shed into a massive $895. Eric's conservative hundred bucks landed him $335. Cast iron table mounted, apple corer. A lot of interest here. Starting the bidding with me, $70, $80, $90 only. 10 on the book here. At $110, $120. Your $120. Son. Still small profit. A profit's a profit. And then it's time for my uh, my token piece of jewellery. It's a Wedgwood Jasper type-in. Very small, tiny little thing um, for which I paid 50 Australian dollars. $15, 20, ladies bid. At 20. At $20. At $20, then. Are you oh. sure? Any further bidding at 20, I will sell. It's a minus 30, that one. Eric bombs out with his Wedgwood pin. And Alan takes a big hit with his belt and teacup, losing $55. 322 is a 1940s measuring counter of unknown use. It says in my catalogue, T-O-P. Shauna? Yeah? This stands for Thing of Purpose, which is something Eric uses whenever he doesn't know what it is. Yeah, it's a Thing of ah. Purpose. <laughs> thing of Purpose. T-O-P. Thing of purpose, $25, $30 starts me away. 40 these chaps know what it is. At 40 up back, 45 sold. Alan's thing of purpose, or B-meter, sells for $45. Alan's next bundle buy sells in quick succession. And remember, he didn't pay for everything. When I was buying that lot, I said to him, just chuck those in for free. Oh, really? And he did. 
Is that the profit? Well, you carry on. I don't know how you sleep at night, but that's another issue, isn't it? That is the second lot Alan picked up for nothing, pushing his freebie profits to $70. And that irks Eric, but he's hoping to strike back with a bottle opener. This is nice. I hope this does three figures. It deserves to do well. It's a lovely bit of carbon, this. 40 with you, 45, 50, he says, 60, 70. At 80 down the front, then, at $80. 100, at $100, then I'm selling at 100. 100, that's break, break even. even. Bang on break even. But was it worth that massive trek to Talon? Yeah, it was. Well, I, yeah, I braved all those snakes and kangaroos jumping through the windscreen of the car. It's a tubular steel and bent glass side table. A bit like a Zimmer frame, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Eric paid just $10 for his Zimmer frame and sells it for 50. You actually made a profit on that. Thing of purpose on this. Okay. No, it's a thing of no purpose. <laughs> <laughs> but just when things were picking up, Eric loses five dollars on his biscuit barrel. Out we go. Thirty-five sold. Rare catalogues of Elton Alan's John's beloved Elton John catalogue makes him a sixty-dollar profit. At this point uh, in the auction, the the blows have been coming thick and fast. You know, from the left to the right. You know, um, I'm, I'm taking them on the chin. You name it, and then. We get to his Japanese sword. World War II officer's sword in distressed condition. Have a good look. You don't see these every day. Remember, Alan picked it up off the back of a truck at Canberra's oh, Green Shed. It was part of a four-item $100 bundle. $220. Oh, what is special about this? What do you know, Alan, that I don't know? What do you know? At 375 in the room against the phone, 400, she says. 450, 500. What was this? Oh, we check the time on this thing. Is it, a, is it a 15th century blade? 500. Wow. Against you, sir, at 500 with the phone bidder. It looks like a piece of rubbish. It's been distressed like you can't believe. Out to the phone at 500. Someone explain to me why it made 500 Australian dollars. Those couple of bundles that I put together down there at the green shed were really quite spectacular. I'd like to do that every day. Eric's feeling totally gutted. But can his Chinese blocks pull him back from the brink? I like those a lot. And so do my absentees. I've got 40, 50, 60, 70 down the front then at $70. The market for the Chinese stuff is going from strength to strength, and there will always be a good following for it. These are a particularly nice pair of blocks. Probably early 20th century Chinese Republic, and you know, a very good buyer base for them. 200. We're just getting started at 200. At 300, he shakes his head. At 300, let him have it. Are we done? Anyone else at $300? Sold. Your number today nice, is. Okay. Well, that's a result five, of sorts, four, isn't it? Yeah. It's crunch time for Eric's $170 picture frames. Out they went for just 80. For some people, this is Lawson's auction rooms. For us, this is the Colosseum in Rome. And uh, <laughs> we're not sure if we're gladiators or whether we're Christians being thrown <laughs> to the lions. Things seem to be going from bad to worse for Eric. I will start the bidding here at $5 only, at five. $5. At $5 for a Gosh, seven more than that for a cup of tea. Come for on, a teapot do that. at 10 no. Last chance, then. All right. No more. Yours, sir. OK, that, that was a... Um, $20 loss. I think I paid $30 for it. Um, so, OK, well, whatever. You know, I'm, I'm never a pessimist. I'm always, you know, the optimist. But as far as this sale was concerned, it really did test my faith in optimism. Alan's lucky last lot, his $80 rocking chair, is one of his favourite buys. I've got a very cheeky $5 here. And 10 is better. Add $10 to start me away. At 10 on the rocking chair. 50, we've got an auction. At $50. 60, 70, 80, 90, gents bid 100. At $100. At $100. Where does that start? I paid 80 bucks for that, and I would have paid 200 for it. Right, it sold for 100. And that's it for Alan's lots. And so, uh, here comes the furniture. Eric spends $310 on his oak furniture in Canberra. He's expecting a big return, but auctioneer Shauna has concerns. I noticed that Eric's bought a lot of brown furniture, a lot of oak furniture, and, and 
I can just say that I'm nervous about it. It's an oak swivel desk chair that's been repaired. Got a bit of rope on it for free. Paid about $60 for this or thereabouts, if my memory serves me correct. 35 on the books at 35. I just want to start bidding. Here at $35, where's the next? At 35, I'm selling at 35, if there's no further. At 35. No. Are we done? Nobody sits down anymore. Honestly, <laughs> $35. <laughs> at $35, I'm selling. Are we done? No. At no. Five, no, no further. No, we want some. I don't want to have. Ah, OK, that hurt. Well, well it stay. is a punch in the solar plexus. Where do we go on the armchairs? Who's got 80 to start me? $80. Uh, well, it's no exaggeration to say that the pair of armchairs in the UK, I would hope to get um, somewhere in the region of around about £300. Uh, so let's start talking around about $600 minimum in the UK. And for the four stand chairs, I think it's fair to say that we would be getting somewhere in the region of about £180. A pair of armchairs, no money at all. $80, halve it and start me at 40 if you will. This was a disaster, and it was a disaster big time. 30 I have, and that's a start. 35 with the lady at 35. I mean, this is giveaway time. Uh, and having sold them for $35, you know, I'm thinking, well, what are we going to get for the four stand chairs? And these match the previous lot, but they okay. don't have I don't want to watch this online. Just tell me and when it's gone, go? will you? Got $20 to start me. Let's get going. 20 Let's and we're away. Going. Let's at get 20 started. Here. Okay. At 20. That seems awfully cheap, but we're here to sell. You can't win them all. Sold okay. the same oh, way, 25. God. So, in future, um, I will be very careful when it comes to uh, to looking at uh, furniture as a potential weapon uh, to arm myself against uh, Mr. Alan Carter. So Eric's $310 gamble on oak furniture didn't quite pay off. His total return, a miserable $85. And that wraps up round three of our 10-round battle. And the results are in. Let's see who's ahead. Alan has sold $1,935. Eric, $1,070. Congratulations, Alan. Wow. Hey, thank you. <laughs> yeah, good one. Nice one. I'm really pleased for you. I sure you are. In this one, I had a, a real stroke of luck when we were down in Canberra at the Green Shed because I'm quite happy to dig around in rubbish and see if I can find something in the rubbish. And Eric's is not. If I'd have been Napoleon, this would have been my Waterloo. Next time on Clash of the Collectibles, we're hitting the road for the coast and the treasure hunt intensifies. You should be able to double or treble your money. The battle for bargains pushes Alan to the brink. Don't like it? An awful lot of money. Yeah. As far as I'm concerned, end of deal. As Auction Day reveals some massive surprises. $50. Oh, no. <laughs> That's next on Clash of the Collectibles. <laughs>